The Matildas have lost their final warm-up match before the Olympics. 2-1 loss to Canada in Spain overnight. Uh, let's talk about it because there is a lot to go through and dissect. Uh, while it was a loss in the end, of course, we shouldn't forget that Canada uh, are the last Olympic champions. They won gold in Tokyo and uh, they're a team who we struggled against uh, in the past. Four wins uh, out of five matches heading into this game. The one win for the Matildas coming in that Women's World Cup match in the group stage uh, last year. So uh, heading into the lineup, first of all, it was a strong team that was named. Uh, the one concern was Caitlin Ford, who was named in the initial squad sheet um, and then a, a late withdrawal uh, due to a quad issue. Let's have a look at the uh, the tweet from the official Matildas page here. Um, so Caitlin Ford was named in the initial lineup. Uh, Caitlin Ford felt a tightness in her quad during warm-up as a precaution has been withdrawn with all focus being uh, available for the 25th of July versus Germany, which is fair enough. This is uh, this was a B international. It wasn't even a, a full international friendly match. Um, but you, you obviously don't want to risk Ford if there's any you know risk of, of, of inflaming that injury, making it worse. And Sean Fryer came in on that left-hand side and I thought performed really, really well. Uh, she opened the scoring for the Matildas, a really, really nicely taken goal in the 23rd minute. And it was a nice move too, the way the, the Matildas got forward and, and, and Mary Fowler sort of cutting across the box, the pass, and then the, the finish from Fryer as well was really nice. Just a manoeuvre around the defender, left foot finish from the Brisbane Raw player. And uh, but the little, the, the moment in that move that I really liked and wanted to highlight was the, the run from Courtney Vine. She sort of runs the opposite way, dragging the Canadian backline across ju even just like half a metre, which I think just created that little bit of space for Sean Fryer to get around the fullback and make that finish. So a great move from Vine. And it was interesting to see Courtney Vine did start up top for the Matildas. Michelle Heyman was on the bench. Of course, we did have a, a, a multitude of substitutes uh, made uh, in the second half as we rotated the squad around a little bit. Um, but look, Matilda's had the advantage from there, but uh, that was one of the few chances that Australia had in this game. Unfortunately, Canada were the better side in the end. Uh, 41st minute, Prince capitalizing uh, on a mistake at the back from Mackenzie Arnold, a rare mistake uh, from Arnold. And uh, the, I think the, the way she was found so much space in the box there, Prince, was a little bit concerning. You look at the, if you look at the move there, especially a lot of those wide angles from the camera show it pretty clearly. Kennedy and Hunt, a lot of space in between them, which was worrying. There was no one really tracking the run of Prince. She was just able to comfortably, you know, when the ball was spilled, comfortably finish it into the back of the net. So a little worrying moment there as well. And we'll come back to that defense as well, because that's uh, where it sort of fell apart for that last goal as well in the end. Um, but from there, we look, we had a couple nice moments here and there. 44th minute, uh, Sean Fry and Claire Wheeler, who we should mention as well, was starting at left back for this game. Uh, no Catley, no Torpy for this match. Interesting to see that Wheeler did start ahead of someone like Courtney Nevin, who's maybe a bit more of a natural defender, especially in that left back role. But in that 44th minute, the way they got forward together, the the, the run from Willie into the box, dangerous pass across the front of goal. Um, again, one of the few moments from Australia, all those subs at the halftime break. Uh, Fryer with a nice moment as well in the 67th minute, the way she, again, you know, just shifted past the defender, uh, played a dangerous cross into the box that was collected by the goalkeeper. But the 85th minute is where it finally came for Canada in the end. And and it's concerning, I think, to highlight the fact that, um, you know, so I think it's important to highlight the fact that both these goals came uh, at, towards the end of halves. And Tony Gustafson has spoken a lot, um, you know, in the pre-match press conference about how they're intentionally sort of, you know, training uh, very intensely and, and making sure that, um, you know, the players are ready for what is going to be a very busy tournament, a short turnaround between games. So maybe we can put it down to that, uh, you know, hot conditions over there as well in Spain and you know maybe, maybe some tired legs towards the end of the halves um, but the way that we were sort of just you know far too casual playing out from the back I mean Canada is obviously going to punish us but you know any of our group stage opponents would punish us in that moment whether it is Germany Zambia or USA uh, look a moment at the end for Mary Fowler who made a good run into the box her shot went wide in the end the concerning thing as well from the Matildas as we look at the stats here coming from Google two shots uh, recorded for Australia in the end with the one on the 
on target, obviously being the goal. Possession stats were pretty even, but you can see the way there. Canada, you know, just created um, far too many opportunities. Six on target in the end. Uh, there was only a few moments where Mackenzie Arnold was really tested. She made a nice, you know, tip over the bar in the first half. Um, but yeah, Prince Fiends with the two goals for Canada. Sean Fry with the one for Australia. And look, I think the couple things to take away from this game is that maybe hopefully we can, you know, find some more creativity moving forward in attack. I mean, just the simply the, the lack of chances for Australia was concerning, especially considering you look at the plays that we did have starting on the park. I mean, Cooney Cross playing a full 90 minutes, Rasso, Vine, Fowler in that first half. I thought Sean Fry was probably our best player in this game. She was dangerous on that left-hand side. Maybe provides a bit of a headache for Tony Gustafsson heading into the first game against Germany in a couple of weeks' time. You know, does he start Fryer? Uh, does, does Ford, you know, come into a central role or does she start from the bench? That'll be interesting. Um, but on top of that, I mean, is Ford fit? That's the concern as well, the injury situation. Because not only is Ford obviously a huge concern being one of Australia's top players uh, and she's got a really important role, especially in the absence of Sam Kerr. But Tamiki Yallop uh, was ruled out of this game with an injury. We knew that Catley and Torpy were going to be missing the game as well. Tegan Micah, goalkeeper, uh, missing through injury in this game as well. So it's a, it's another big concern for Australia heading into this tournament is the injury situation, considering we have a pretty small squad heading into the Olympics as well. Um, you know, we're going to make sure that these players are fit and firing heading, to, heading into this tournament. So look, hopefully we can take, you know, learn some lessons from this game. I'm sure Gustafsson has, and uh, we can, uh, you know, build towards this Germany game, which is going to be super, super tough. We've got such a tough group stage here, and we need to um, we need to solve some of these mistakes and some of these errors at the back. And uh, uh, if we're going to make it through the group stage, because uh, if not, we could easily be punished by some three quality sides that we will be facing in the group stage. Let me know your thoughts on this match and how you think the Matildas will go in the Olympics in the comment section. A 2-1 loss for Australia in the end. Uh, all all sites now are on the group stage in just a couple weeks' time. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Lockie. This is Cosmic Football, and I'll see you in the next one.